coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SDL 2.0 tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning about spreadsheet animation and I know a lot of people really genu genuinely like these tutorials so I hope you guys really enjoy it. Uh, so uh, what, we, what we need to do for spreadsheet to, for a spreadsheet tutorial we actually need a spreadsheet and so what I want you to type in is Famitsu spreadsheet generator and then we'll click translate this page. Uh, to translate it from Japanese to English or whatever language you need it and uh, you can just design your character you can select male or female but all you have to do is just select on something uh, any article of clothing whatever and you can design it and you're just gonna click to download it and save it uh, so once it's saved uh, <laughs> if we open it up what you can see is that to do animation is not it is just a sequence of images that are played back to back and they're played uh, uh, fast enough so that it looks like it is actually animating and so if we want to do a downward animation we'd have we'd go from the standing animation to this one back to here there 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 and so on and so forth and loop uh, loop the loop the whatever uh, the frames so that we actually get a walking animation and so uh, this is how we're actually gonna get it done so I already did this here so I forgot to erase it uh, I just like to make sure I got everything set before my next tutorial but anyways what we're gonna do with our renderer is we're gonna say put the uh, the or symbol and then we're just gonna put SDL render represent vsync and that's gonna allow us that with our renderer it's going to uh, refresh or update uh, based on the vertical refresh rate of our monitors uh, so once we got that done what we're gonna do is we're gonna say SDL rect and we're just gonna call it player rect and what we what we have to do is we have to crop out uh, the area where we actually want to draw we can't draw the whole image we just want to crop out a section of our image and so uh, this is how we're going to do it so we're also going to have a frame width and a frame height we're going to have a, and we're going to have a texture width and texture height so uh, what we're gonna do is after we actually load in our our, our texture, we're gonna say SDL query texture, and it's gonna ask us for a texture, so we're gonna place it in there. Uh, don't worry about the format or the axis. And what we're gonna do is put a reference to our texture width and our texture height. So now we have our height, our width and height stored, and the frame width. So the width of each individual frame that we want is going to be equal to the width of the whole texture divided by how many frames you actually have in each uh, in each axis. Now I could easily just say the frame width is equal to 32 or hard coded as something else, right? But let's say you have a class or you have a method uh, based on on the creation of animations or sprites or or something like that. Uh, you don't want to have everything hard coded. You want it that if you're gonna reuse your code or something that you just have to you just have to input okay how many frames there are and then what it will do is it'll grab the texture width and then it'll find out the frame width for you. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say okay is equal to texture width and the amount of frames we have in the x coordinate is three. So we check here we have three frames one two three and the y coordinate we have four one two three four so we're gonna say our frame height is equal to texture height divided by four so that's gonna give us 32 by 32 based on these images that we've actually just created and so for our rectangle that we created we're gonna say okay the X and the Y we're gonna set it by default to zero and we're gonna set the width equal to uh, the frame width and we're going to set the height equal to the frame height so uh, that's fun and dandy so once we actually do render copy right this parameter right here specifies what uh, if you want to crop out anything out of the actual texture 
And so what we're gonna do is just put our player rect in there. We'll put a reference to our player rect. And so what we're gonna do is since we're using the vertical refresh, we're assuming that your computer uh, say updates at 60 frames per second, but uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to right at the top I'm just gonna put a constant in uh, FPS equal to 60 and now if your monitors refresh rate is faster than that then obviously put your monitors refresh rate in there uh, we're just assuming that um, that is your refresh rate and then uh, I guess we're gonna call this frame time and we're gonna set it to zero so what we're gonna do in the actual update method is we're gonna say okay if the FPS, <coughs> sorry, if the FPS divided by the frame time is uh, is equal to four, then we're just gonna say that we want to update it, I guess, four times, um, four times per second. So we're gonna say, okay, if so, in our case, we want to update at, uh, we want to update at, we're sorry we're assuming that our monitor is updating at 60 frames per second so once frame time reaches 4 uh, when frame time reaches 15 sorry then it's going to we're gonna do whatever we need to do and sorry about that that was my f so um what we're gonna do is in our game loop we're gonna say frame time plus plus so we're just gonna increment the frame time by one each uh, each update and if this condition occurs then we're just gonna set the frame time equal to zero so that it's gonna keep doing the same things over and over again so we're gonna reset it to zero and then we're gonna update the image that we actually want to draw so in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna say player rect dot x we're gonna say plus equals the frame width and so what what's that's gonna say is okay X is equal to zero right now, right? So after we're, we reach uh, uh, one uh, fourth of the second, it's gonna say, okay, add 30 to the X position, right? Cause X, we're starting right here. So we're X and Y are at zero. So it's gonna say, okay, you reach one fourth of a second, add the frame width. So we're gonna start right here. And then the width and the height remain the same. So we're gonna crop out this image right here. Then it's gonna say, okay, after another fourth of a second, it's going to say, okay, add, add the frame width, which is 32 pixels, uh, to X. So we're going to start drawing from here. We're going to crop this out. And then it's going to say, okay, add another uh, 32 to it. So we're going to say, we're going to reach the actual width of the sheet. So what we need to do is that when we actually reach this point right here, we need to reset it so that X starts drawing from here again. Then it starts drawing from here, starts drawing from here. It says, oh, we reached the end of the sheet, revert back to the beginning. So how to do this is it's really simple. We're just gonna say, okay, if the player rec dot x is well we can just check if it's equal, but we'll just say if it's greater than or equal to the texture's width, then we'll just reset it back to zero again. Okay, and that's all we have to do. So when we run this, so we get a huge red background. Oh, that's because, sorry, I didn't even actually load in the, the image, sorry. So once we run this, as you can see, uh, we can see the walking animation going on. So the reason why it's stretched is because we've set this to null. And when you set it to null, it stretches it to the actual render target. So if you want it to, uh, if you want to just to show it in its corner or whatever, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, uh, we'll make another rect say player position we'll say the player position dot x and player position dot y is equal to zero and the width uh, and the height are both equal to 32 and right here we'll just put player position and 
as you can see is animating in the corner now if you wanted to animate a bit faster or whatever obviously you'll say okay you'll you'll give it less time so if you don't want to do it like this we can say okay assuming that we're going 60 frames per second we can say okay if frame time is equal to five then reset it to zero again so now it's going to refresh a lot faster and as you can say as you can see sorry the animation is going a lot faster than regular and I don't know if I showed you this, but uh, the reason why I have a red background rather than a white background is that I used SDL set render draw color and it asks for a render target and it asks for the the colors. I don't want to get too in depth into it, but just in case you guys are wondering, um, it takes hexadecimal colors and to do hex uh, in C++ you put 0x and then it has a decimal value which FF stands for 255, so 255 in the red, 0 in the uh, green, 0 in the blue, and 255 for alpha. And we'll get into colors and stuff later on, so I didn't want to get really in depth into that, but uh, just in case you guys were wondering. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to like my page on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, as well as to sign up on my website as well. So thanks, and bye for now.